So in this quick video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the settings uh, that I enable in the Google Form to really increase that, that test security. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through uh, the background setting. I'm going to explain why I'm going to talk about the background setting in a minute. Um, some of the uh, settings that I enable within the settings. And then uh, the, the final tip that I'm going to talk about for the Google Form Security, it comes from Lynn Hilt. She was a trainer for Kiker Learning. And she was the one who, who gave me this idea, so I certainly want to give her credit. Uh, and it's about creating a secret code so that even if students get to your Google Form without your knowledge, they can't see any of the questions. So stick with me, and I'll walk you through it. So here I am, I went to forms.google.com, um, that works, or I can come up here to my apps launcher and I click on the forms. Uh, now from this menu, I'm going to choose the blank quiz option. Certainly if you just chose uh, the, the blank form option, that's fine. Um, I'll show you in the settings menu what settings you need to enable uh, for uh, to make it a quiz. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is the background. And this is something that uh, is really important, and I carry it over uh, through a lot of things that I'm going to use in the classroom, whether it's a Google Form or a website. Um, I want to make a very colorful, unique background, and that's for a couple reasons. Um, the first reason is that as I'm walking around in the classroom and I'm scanning the students' devices, because, of course, we're not sitting behind the teacher's desk anymore. You know, we're up, we're moving around, we're checking to see what's going on. Um, if the, the site that I've sent them to or the quiz that I've sent them to has a white or a back or black background, well, it looks really similar to other pages. Um, however, Google has, if I come up here and I click on the little color palette, now there's some colors, but that's not colorful enough for me. I want, like, super bright polka dots. Uh, so maybe something like this, purple bubbles, or maybe I want, if I come over, let's see here, maybe some illustrations or, uh, okay, green shamrocks, maybe it's St. Patrick's Day, and I'm, I'm going to choose a theme. Um, but I'm going to choose specifically something that's very bright and very clear. So the reason being is now when I'm walking around and I told my kids, hey, when you're at the right place, you should see a whole bunch of green shamrocks so it does two things one the kids know that they're in the right place and two it's really easy for me as i'm scanning the classroom looking at everybody's computer i should see green on everybody's screen and if i don't well that means they clicked off that website they went to a different website so i use the background all the time really one to so the kids know where they are and so i know where they are it's coming up to part Two. All right, so we picked a very colorful background. So now we need to go into the settings menu of this quiz because I, I want to enable certain features to really make sure that this is as locked down and secure as possible. And to do that, I'm going to come up here to the little cogwheel. Now, if I chose, when I first created this Google form, if I chose, if I told it was a quiz, what Google did is it actually went in here and enabled um, certain features already for me. But if I just chose a blank form, I can go in here and change these features as well. So I'm going to do a couple things. So in the, under the general tab, I'm going to make sure I'm collecting their email addresses. Um, and the first question I'm going to ask them, of course, is going to be their first and then their last name. And I am going to separate them. And I'm going to talk about why in a second. But this gives me a little added insurance that if they sign in under one account, but then and the quiz tell me that their name is really Johnny uh, when it's Susie, well, I have the email address that they logged in as kind of an extra backup to say, no, actually, uh, it looks like you were on somebody else's account. So I definitely want to make sure I'm collecting the email addresses. Um, because this is a quiz, uh, I would make sure that this is restricted to my domain. And I'm going to limit their response to one response. I don't want them to be able to go back and multiple times uh, take the quiz. And so, of course, they're not going to be able to edit after they submit. I don't want them to see a summary chart. Um, so restricting, limiting to one response, collecting email addresses. Uh, in the presentation tab, a lot of times, depending on the length of my quiz, 
um, I will show the progress bar, and that'll just say like, hey, you're fifty percent of the way through. Uh, you're sixty uh, percent of the way through, and it gives the kids an idea of how far they are in the Google quiz. Um, the next option we have here is shuffle question order, and this is a uh, uh, there's a little bit of danger to using this option, um, so I'm going to walk you through it now. If I have a giant, let's say, a 20 question quiz, and I choose shuffle question order, well, every student's going to get questions in different order. That's wonderful. Now, I come from an ELA background, so a lot of times there was the read the passage, and then the next five questions were regarding that passage. You're going to want to make sure that if you have a quiz that, that you have where question two depends on question number one or the questions one through five all come from a passage or a video that you had the kids watch. I want to make sure that those that passage and those questions stay together. And you're going to do that by um, once you are building your quiz, you're going to set up different pages for each kind of section. And what Google will do is it will shuffle the sections and it will shuffle the questions within that section. But everything will stay together. If I don't separate them into different pages, what's going to happen is uh, my questions will be all mixed up and that passage may be at the end of the quiz and that question may be at the beginning and kids are going to get super confused. So you do want to be careful with this. Now, if this is, let's say, just like a straight vocab quiz where it's 20 questions and the questions, it doesn't matter which one comes in which order, I can do that really easily just by clicking on this button. Um, then I'm going to come over here to quizzes. Now, I told this was a quiz, so Google automatically enabled it. Um, and now I have some options. So I'm going to say I want to release a grade later after manual review. And that's just because I know that I'm given this quiz periods one, period two, period three. And I don't want uh, the period three kids to have an unfair advantage. So I'm going to say later after manual review. Now, down here we have uh, three three options, and this really depends on your personal preferences of what you enable. Um, I'm going to say missed questions. I, I like to leave that checked. What that's going to do is it's going to tell the kids if they skipped a question, they have to go back and answer it. So I'm going to leave that. Um, now, correct answers, I'm probably not going to leave that up because uh, if this was like a, a review quiz, sure, maybe, but not today. And the point values, and this is going to tell kids uh, how many points each question is worth, I'm going to leave that enabled. So once you set those all up, go ahead and click Save. Then we're going to come over and there's another, there's kind of a secondary settings menu. And that's uh, next to the Send button on the right-hand side. We have three little horizontal dots. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to come down here to Preferences. Um, one thing that I really want to do um, when I'm setting my, my quiz is I'm going to make all the questions required. Um, I don't want my kids skipping questions. I'm going to force them to answer them. So I'm going to make them all required. Um, and this also allows me to set a default point value. So I know that every question is going to be worth one point. I can change it here, and that way I don't have to change it. Now, if I have, let's say, that, that long response question at the end, and I want to make that more points, I can change that individually later on in the quiz. But I really like both these options. Okay, so here's the third part of our Google Forms security session. So here I have my, uh, my quiz. Um, now, the first question I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, explicitly ask for first name and then last name. I'm going to do this because it's going to allow me to really easily sort the responses once they are finished taking the quiz. Um, I don't want to, I want to avoid just saying name because then I'll get some kids that are putting in their first name, some kids are putting in their last name, some kids are putting in a nickname. And this makes it really difficult for me for when I'm trying to enter everything into my grade book when things are all in, in different language. So first name, next question, last name. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to click the add a question. I'm going to actually, this is a really cool feature. I just realized it. I'm going to call it test code. And a couple things happen. So Google said, okay, it thinks it should be a short answer. It should. Uh, and it automatically added response validation. Now, if, if it doesn't do that automatically, if you call it, you know, the secret password or whatever you call it, uh, response validation lives down here in the three little dots. And I'm going to say response validation. Now, you'll notice the fact that I have created, I've used the add a section button. So I have my 
my beginning part here, and then the test begins down here. And this is where we were talking about the shuffling the, the questions. Um, it's only going to shuffle the questions within each section. So now if I have just one whole section, it's going to shuffle everything all at once. So that's why it's really important to separate. The other thing that this is going to do, and I, I'll show you in a second, is this is preventing the kids. So even if they do somehow, let's say I, I uh, put the Google form in my Google Classroom and I select the wrong time frame and I send out the quiz early, or maybe I, I want the kids to be able to load it on their computer and then I'm going to give them some verbal instructions and then I want them to begin, but I don't want them to start just right away. Um, this They will get to this page and they won't be able to move beyond it. So what does response validation do? So I say test code, and I can choose either a word or a number. Um, so for this one, I'll say the number, and I'll say it has to be equal to. And now this is one, you know, pick something that, that you're going to be able to remember for the 30 minutes that you need to remember it, um, and something that hopefully the kids can't guess. So, you know, your room number or the period is going to be a bad thing. So um, I will do... Um, um, 23 as a secret code. Now, next up we have a custom error text. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't put anything here. This is a really easy mistake that, that sometimes I see people do. So here's my preview. It asks for the first name, last name. So I'm just going to uh, you know, type in some characters just so it'll allow me to go through. Now, you notice the fact that if I try to type something, it tells me what the secret code is. So I want to prevent that. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to say, ask me for the code. Now, I still know that the secret code is 23. So even if the kids get here, they can't move on. So even if they, all right, they type in their name, they type in their last name, they don't know what the code is. It just says, ask me for the code, and it won't let them move on. Um, once they type in the secret code, I say, hey, kids, the code for this class is 23. Then it allows them to move on to the next part of the test. Um, so that's a really great way to kind of control your test. And then what I would do is at the end of that class, when that class leaves, if I'm going to reuse this, the same quiz, now, sometimes I'll take a quiz and I'll duplicate it for each class because maybe I want to change some questions around for each different class. But if I'm using the same quiz for all of my classes over the course of the day, you know, period one comes in, I give them the code, they take their quiz. At the end of the period, when the bell rings, and I'm going to tell them that I'm going to do this, when the bell rings, I'm going to stop accepting responses. And it's a rule in my classroom that you need to hit submit before you leave the classroom. Um, this is going to prevent kids from um, starting the quiz in my class, leaving and saying, going and finding their friend in the lunchroom or library and answering it later. Um, and so that way, if they come to me and said, oh, I started it, but it won't let me submit it, I know why. It's because, well, at the end of that class, I am no longer accepting responses, and I turn that off. Then what I'm going to do, I have, I have, you know, maybe a fourth period class coming in. Well, I need to change this code. So now I'm going to change it to uh, 84. And, you know, again, I don't go sequential. The kids will figure it out. They'll ask their friends, oh, it was 23, it's 24. You know, so make sure you, you change this up. I'll then go under responses, accepting responses, and then the next class will come in. 23 won't work. So I have to change it to, I think I said 84. Now we can go on with the quiz. Um, so yeah, it's a rule in my classroom. You have to hit submit before you leave the classroom. If you leave the classroom and don't hit submit, as far as I'm concerned, you were cheating and it's a zero. Um, so it's really important that they, they learn that lesson that they have to submit before they leave the classroom. And at the end of the period, no longer accepting responses. Um, now back here with the, uh, the validation. Now I made it equal to a number. Um, you certainly could do uh, a word, and from here it would just say contain. And so maybe I'll choose uh, the word is Bob, 
And again, oh, see, it's no longer selecting. I have to turn it back on for myself. And now the test code will be Bob. Oh, and notice, see, I made that mistake. And this is why it's always really important to take your own quiz. Uh, make sure that, that you have tested this and so I see the fact that I need to go back in here and I need to change the custom error text to ask me. Now when I when I come back, test code, see I have to put in the code of Bob. It allows me to continue. Um, down here we have the uh, the rest of the test and you notice that I have separated it using an add the section. This is what prevents the kids from moving on. Now the last thing that Google allows me to do, which I, I really do like, um, I have the option to certainly shuffle the question order. I also have an option to shuffle the response order and this way it avoids people, oh it's the first one or the answer is A. Um, so even if kids are looking at the same question their responses are going to be in different order now to do that unfortunately you do have to do this for each individual question so here i have a multiple choice question i'm going to come down here to the three little dots and i'm going to say um, shuffle option order and what that's going to do is every student when they get to this question um, these three answer choices will be in different orders um, and i like that a lot especially so that way i don't have to worry about um, you know, I can go through and make the first choice the correct answer, then the other choices distractor answers. I choose that, and I don't have to worry about in my head, okay, it's A, B, C, D, E, A, D. I don't have to keep track of that. Google will automatically cycle for me, so each student has a unique test. So I really hope this video on making a secure Google quiz has uh, really been helpful for you. Uh, we have two other videos. They're going to be over here. Uh, I definitely encourage you guys to check them out in our Naughty or Nice video series. So, Aaron for AOP Tech, thank you so very much. If you have questions, ideas, feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Have a great day.